Welcome back guys. We are talking about DNA from the beginning. Primer set of experiments that lead to the foundation of modern genetics. Now uh, what we've studied earlier that uh, in the experiment number 13 we've seen experiment conducted by Charles Davenport that the Mendelian laws are kind of applicable in certain aspect of human genetics also. But as uh, the time passed by and newer experiments start to be conducted and also the experiments conducted by Charles Davenport and his colleagues in, in Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, CSHL, he, he started a new office called Eugenic Office. You know, in that office, they started to find out the family tree. They started to, you know, ex take those family tree from different, uh, different placements and different portions and for different types of people and look at those family trees to find out the clue whether the genetics or the genetic rules from Mendel applicable to the human genetics or not. And it is find out that the, as, as they start and pass by the years, they found out certain portions, certain traits are not being, you know, explained by genetics rule for Mendel, right? Because Mendelian genetics rules are applicable to certain uh, portions of human genetics. In large scale expressions, it is not verified. How? Because, you know, at that time I've told you, hemophilia was a royal disease called the royal blood disease, which is actually ca kind of killing all the individuals of the Queen Victoria family the England royal family. In that case, the hemophilia is a trait. Now people start to find how this hemophilia is carried and they start to apply the Mendelian genetics in it. And they found that there is some problem with that. Mendelian genetics cannot explain how hemophilia is carried from the one generation to the next and so on. They started to look for other examples like skin color of human. Other examples, many more different ex examples, complicated examples, and ultimately it is find out that that Mendelian law of inheritance are kind of not always applicable to human genetics. So Mendelian law, so that's the fourteenth condition or the fourteenth conclusion for ours. That's the Mendelian inheritance, Mendelian law of Inheritance, inheritance cannot explain all human genetics pattern. That is the conclusion. Now previously, the conclusion taken by Charles Davenport was that it can be applicable. It is applicable. But after certain experimentation, they found out that that is a concept that it is not always applicable. It cannot explain all the human genetics pattern or human genetic inheritance. Right? And example for that is hemophilia. Because it's later found out that hemophilia and actually, actually in the time of Mendel, once it taken all those different traits, they are actually present in the somatic chromosome. Because remember, in the early experiments we've already discussed and find out that there are chromosomes in our body which are responsible for development of sexual organs and determining the sex. They are called as sex chromosomes, right? It might be one or two chromosomes in the whole body, but they are very important to, to make the sex of that particular organism. Now all the trait Mendel was Mendel actually studied are present in somatic cells. So they are somatic cell cellular traits, the somatic sex cell chromosomes. For that chromosomes or somatic chromosomes, they actually carry all those Mendelian law inheritance. But in case of this hemophilia and disease like color blindness, those things actually those genes for hemophilia, for color blindness, actually present in sex chromosome instead of the somatic chromosome. That's why those traits are not being explained properly in case of hemophilia and, uh, and other diseases that are present in other genes. So the traits linked with sex chromosome is not applicable or is not kind of explainable using 
Mendelian inheritance. And that was kind of proven by several experiments, majorly by Charles Davenport and his colleagues, and also some other scientists in the latter times.